Hello folks, I'm Dren Dutaroff. My old tutorial on this topic has been getting some more attention due to recent events, but things have changed a little bit since that video was created. In this updated tutorial, I will be covering the multiple places where add-ons can be found after you subscribe to them, and the ways to back up said add-ons so that you can keep them in case they get removed from the workshop. There are a few different methods and variations to the process, so I would recommend watching the video all the way through to get the whole picture, and then to try it yourself, checking back on the video as necessary. This section is just a repeat of the original tutorial. I'm including it because it is important to know this information, even if the stuff here isn't quite as relevant as it used to be. So find Gary's mod in your Steam library. It can be here, it can be down here, it can be here. But either way, find it, right click on it, go down to manage, browse local files, and in here you will find, it will open up a file explorer of the game files. This is where pretty much everything is stored. Crash information, the application itself, if you go into this lower case, you'll find stuff like um, your demos and your dupes and your add-ons. Um, originally, all of your add-ons that you subscribed to on the workshop would then be moved into this, well not then be moved, but would be stored in this folder and can be altered and edited and changed by the workshop whenever workshop stuff got updated. Things have changed a little since then, so stuff does still sometimes get updated in here, but not necessarily always. Normally in here it should just be GMAs, this folder shouldn't be here normally, and that zip you saw earlier is something I added my I, the leftover from, you know, add-on creator stuff. But either way, if you want to make sure that your files do not get tampered with or altered or edited or changed by the, um, the workshop, what you can do is you can create a new folder inside the add-ons folder and move the add-ons that you want to keep in there. And normally, these should then show up as locally installed add-ons in your add-ons menu in Gary's mod. I've noticed sometimes this doesn't always work with loading. Sometimes you won't actually be able to find them in-game. Most of the time you should be able to find them from the same name that they used to have, but if it's, say, a .gma that you've been given someone else's backup and it wasn't something you subscribed to, it might not necessarily load up in the same way. Um, but either way, if you put them in Ooga Booga, they cannot be altered or changed by the workshops. So if you put them in here and they don't show up first, they, they will still remain here and they won't be altered by the workshop. So I'm just going to copy these in here and now these should still show up in Gary's mod even if or when they get removed from the workshop. Now unfortunately the place where add-ons are normally stored has been changed since this original video and this original method was devised which is why the rest of this tutorial exists. So next I'm going to show you where to find the add-ons now or rather where newly subscribed add-ons now go to instead of in here. Nowadays add-ons are stored in a slightly different place to where they used to be. They're still on the same drive that your game will be installed on, but they are in a different location. So if you do the same as the last part, find Gary's mod, manage, browse local files, instead of going into one of these folders you go up two folders to Steam Apps, and then you find workshop, content, 4000. 4000 is Gary's Mod's Steam game ID. And you see there are a bunch of other folders in here that have a string of numbers. These numbers directly correlate with the um, Steam item on the workshop. So, for example, Crystal Cluster Prop Pack, right? You can see at the end of the URL there's a string of numbers, which you can find and copy easily by clicking Share. And if we search for that in 4000, we should find a folder with those numbers. And inside, there should be either a .gma file or a .bin file. Whilst you can try copying this file to a new folder within your add-ons folder, as we do in the previous chapter, there isn't a guarantee that the add-on will show up in-game, due to the way these files can sometimes be named. As such, the next best course of action is to fully extract the add-on and install them as a legacy or non-workshop add-on. Slight addendum. I don't know where in the video I'm going to put this. But um, sometimes if add-ons appear as hidden or such, you can sometimes still find the information on them. So this one, for example, if you click on it, go to the URL, because it, it, it will still give you a URL, but it will, you know, just say, sorry, this fails a problem accessing the item. And most of the time that means it won't be in your workshop content either, but sometimes it will show up. So for example, with that one, it shows up there, and there's a bin file. 
So sometimes you can find the hidden ones, um, but sometimes it will just either take you to an empty folder or it will not be able to find the numbers. So in general, it's a good idea to try and get your add-ons backed up before they get removed. Back in the days before the Steam Workshop, add-ons had to be installed by creating a folder in the add-ons folder and putting the files inside that folder with any other folders that might be needed in the correct order. We are going to be turning our Workshop add-ons into legacy add-ons, allowing us to use them independently from the Workshop. To see legacy add-ons in-game, we will need the extended spawn menu add-on by Rubat, which you can find in the Workshop. This add-on also provides many other utilities, so it's generally good to have regardless. To extract the contents of GMA files, there are two methods, the second of which requires you to download additional tools that are separate from Steam, but this second method can also be used to extract bin files. This method does not require you to download any additional programs, but cannot be used to extract .bin files. This method can only be used to extract .gma files. In your base Gary's mod files, the one with uppercase or caps lock, you'll find a folder called bin which stores a bunch of smaller applications that Gary's Mod users or that mod makers can use to create stuff within Gary's Mod. Mine has some files that you won't have, but yours should have a file or a program called GMAT. This should be in everything by default. You do not need to download it from anywhere else. What you can do with this is pretty simple. You just take whatever file you want. So for example, let's go for Pokemon uh, Unova Dragons. Um, and you grab your .gma, you left click, and you drag it on top of gmad, so it says open with gmad. And this runs that, and should now have created a folder inside wherever you, your gma is originally stored with the contents of the add-on. So in here, you can see that there's models for Kyrem and all the other Pokemon you know of dragons. I'm going to cover what we need to do with this folder later, so watch through the other few bits and you'll then know what to do with this folder. Keep an eye on this folder if this is your method for extracting your GMA that you want to use. Make sure it's in a place you can remember where it is because we're going to need to put it somewhere else later. This method requires you to download two extra programs, but if you're using this method for GMA files, only the first one is strictly needed. However, both programs are needed to extract bin files. The first program you need is gwtool.exe, which I'll provide a download link to in the description. Um, this is a pretty simple program, and it works right out of the game when you download it. When it, you know, when it lets you download. But you open it, and this is all the window is. And we'll be needing that later, so make sure you remember where that's installed. The next program we'll need is a program called 7-Zip. This is one that requires you to actually like properly install it instead of just downloading it. So download it from the website linked in the description. Uh, most computers use this one here, but if you're unsure, make sure you know which type of um, operating system your computer uses. Um, click the download link and then run the file and go through installation which I've already done, so I'm not going to do it here, but you know, just follow this through until it's all fully installed. Once both of these are installed, we can get to extracting add-ons. So if you're doing just a GMA, it's a very simple case of, much like with GMAD, just drag and drop it onto the GTW tool window. Of course, you have to make sure the GTW tool is actually open, and it should do what, pretty much the same thing as GMAD. It will, open a, it will create a folder from it. If you're doing a .bin file, this will be a slightly different process. So you still take the bin and drag it over, but it will then turn the bin into this different file type. It says WinRAR archive because I have WinRAR installed, but it might show something different. Either way, it will change how the file works. Right click, find your seven zip options. You might need to do something with more options to get to this, and then extract files or extract here. Either one of those works. I'm going to do extract here. And this extracts this file as a, another bin file, but this bin file can be extracted by GW tool. So you drag that over to the window, and voila, we now have the add-on and all of its files, which in this case is a map. Now that we have extracted the content of these um, add-ons, we can now 
turn them into legacy add-ons. In a sense, they're already legacy add-ons, because if you look inside, you'll see there's a main folder, and then in there, there's add-on information, the models, and the materials. Basically, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to move or copy these folders into the main add-ons folder. And I mean the main add-ons folder and not the folder we created earlier if you, you know, uh, did the old method or tried out the old method. You would just move your folder here into the main add-ons folder. You have to make sure that the way the, uh, the folders work is that it goes folder name and then the contents. So materials, it goes straight to materials models inside add-ons. This is the same for all of them, whether it's a map or models or whatever, it needs to go name and then contents. Straight to contents, right? Whether that be the maps folder or the add-on. Now your legacy add-on should be showing up in Gmod if you've installed the extended spawn menu as I told you to earlier. They'll appear under the add-ons legacy section of the spawn menu which is a new section added by that add-on instead of in the main uh, add-on section. And this means that this add-on is completely unaffected by the workshop. If the workshop goes down, if you do not have an internet connection, you will still be able to in a sense access these add-ons. Or at the very least you'll still be able to find them in the files because they are not internet related at all. So just for an in-game demonstration, um, you will see if you've just done the old method that all of your add-ons that you put in the new folder should show up as locally installed add-on. And if you hover over it, you can see it will tell you the location and name of this locally installed uh, GMA file. So for example, let's take this one, Pokemon Unova Dragons. Um, and just to double clarify, um, we search for Unova here and it only gets the locally installed add-on and this completely unrelated add-on that just so happens to share a name. Um, and if we look in our add-ons folder, bear with, you will see that right here, Pokemon Unova Dragons is still here, still accessible, everyone in it is still accessible, and working as intended. Now, as for add-ons, uh, as for legacy add-ons, um, so stuff that we've uh, installed through extracting the files, they show up here in add-ons legacy. Um, as you can see, here, moving, all fine. Um, but these but legacy add-ons will not show up in your add-ons menu. So as you can see, this one's called, like, Johto, whatever, and it should not... Now, it does show up here because I actually have two versions of this add-on, but as you can see, it's not showing like a workshop version or anything. Um, and also, this stand pose that I currently have is currently, although you can find it on the workshop, is currently installed uh, manually. So if I do the same thing here, go into stand, you can see there's no stand pose tool here. But clearly it's here in game because it's a legacy add-on which doesn't show up in here because it's not like a model that you can spawn, it's all coding stuff. If it's all coding stuff and map stuff, it obviously won't show up in here, this is just where models would show up. But maps and stuff should all show up in like the normal location. Same with tools. Tools will all show up in the same location if you've got one of those as your um, legacy or locally installed add-on. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, but please check to see if someone else has already asked your question. I took way too much time out of my day to make this, so if you found this at the least bit helpful, I would really appreciate giving some love to my other projects, as this channel is mostly the meme and low effort channel, aside from this video and the last tutorial. My main channel has gaming, animation, and some old speed paints. My DeviantArt has my Gmod posters, comics, and drawn artworks, and my ex Twitter is just for artwork and retweets of stuff I find cool. That's about all. I'll catch you on the flip side.